Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, just a couple updates. Uh, first off, um, Jordan McLeod did suffer um, a season ending injury um, on his uh, lower leg, um, both knee and ankle. So he'll be getting surgery at some point in time here in the next probably a few days. Um, I think sometime, maybe, maybe next week. Um, hopefully we'll be able to travel him to Colorado. Uh, he has been a great teammate, and the guys have really embraced having him. So our plan would be to do that. Um, I expect Isaiah Rutherford back in the game. No problems uh, there. That was uh, an illness that missed the game. Don't expect any other um, changes in terms of injuries. Uh, so, But uh, very unfortunate, obviously, with Jordan. I do think that the team responded well to him playing quarterback for us. And um, you could see we were moving the football. Um, Pretty much um, the last couple games, uh, whether unless we had a self-inflicted wound, we probably moved it at will. So uh, this past game, obviously we didn't punt till the 73rd play of the game, 73rd offensive play of the game. Um, also want to thank our fans. I thought we had a great turnout. Um, I think I've, over 43,000 people were at the game. Uh, it was awesome. It was electric atmosphere when it was 17-16. Um, midway through the third quarter um, was awesome when we threw the, when Jamari threw the touchdown pass the place was electric and uh, I hope our fans understand that that makes a huge difference it makes a huge difference uh, it was remarked uh, both uh, I had gotten comments from a lot of people over at the UCLA sideline about what a great atmosphere it was here at Arizona um, so I thank the fans for that and I hope that next Friday night uh, when we play Washington we even have a bigger turnout uh, which would be fantastic uh, and then finally, I just want to say, uh, in terms of the way the game went, uh, after watching the film, I don't have too many changes from my opinion on Saturday evening. We had a lot of self-inflicted wounds. We, uh, we had seven drives in the game before we punted on the seventh drive. The reason why we punted was because we had a third and six called back because of a penalty. Um, otherwise, we would have been, uh, again, inside their 40-yard line moving the ball. Um, we had four uh, field goals. Uh, or three field goals, which uh, was disappointing. Um, all of those were on penalties. We had a third and nine that turned to a third and 14. We had a third and one conversion that was a chop block, which made it third and 16. And then we had a snap, um, a, a quick snap, which was a 16-yard um, loss. So all that's very disappointing uh, in terms of us being able to really turn drives into touchdowns. Defensively, obviously they did a great job against the pass. Um, but with that, you also have to be able to stop the run. And, um, you know, it was very much felt like we were playing a team that was fully committed to running the football. I think they had three yards of passing offense in the first half, 87 for the game. Um, and uh, we let up some explosive passes, which were explosive runs, which really hurt us. Um, the biggest thing I thought our defense did on a positive side of things was they swarmed to the ball. You looked at our guys tackling, there were seven or eight guys around the ball. Um, and that's what we're looking for, and that's how we were able to get some takeaways. And uh, that was exciting to see that type of energy that we've been asking our defensive players to play with. Uh, they were leaving the pile. They were all over every tackle. And that was, uh, that was cool to watch. And then also um, the sudden changes. I mean, there was a situation when we punted, uh, shanked a punt uh, after – uh, we tried to get him to jump off sides, and we, we false started, and then we uh, shanked the punt. We got the ball back three plays later uh, off of a strip. Uh, Trey Hayward recovered a Kenny Abair punch out, which next thing you know, it's the start of the fourth quarter, and we got the ball down a score. And, uh, you know, the final part that say, you know, I would say is this, that um, the last four games we played, we've been down one score with eight minutes left in the game um, in all four games. Uh, and um, BYU, I should say, not the San Diego State game. So BYU, UCLA, Oregon, and NAU. Uh, it was an eight-point game in all four of those games uh, with eight minutes left in the game. So um, we, need to, we need to figure out a way to score more points. I'm not numb to that. And we have to figure out a way to um, prevent teams from scoring more points. But we're playing a lot of close games right now, which is a sign that uh, usually things will turn quickly. 
defensively, the way UCLA was able to run the ball, did you see any similarities to like the San Diego State game? Yeah, it was a little bit different schematically. Uh, the inside zone stuff got us. You know, that they got us on that 52-yarder or whatever it was, that 48-yarder on third and two, which turned into a touchdown to make it 31-16. Um, they were a little bit more um, of – you know, a different type of scheme with the quarterback that they were running with Dorian. They kind of – they got in a pistol a little bit more uh, than San Diego State did. Um, but they were still – you know, I think their runners are pretty similar. They both have those big, strong backs. But uh, in terms of what they were trying to do in terms of attacking the edges, they were a little bit more aggressive. Uh, UCLA was in terms of running the wide zone where San Diego State was a little bit more pouring it up inside. Can you tell us any more about exactly what Jordan's injuries are and then also how he's handled the whole situation? No, we'll leave it at just the ankle and the, uh, you know, the ankle and the, the knee, but uh, the extent of it will, you know, leave. But it, there, I expect him back uh, in January. I would expect him back for winter workouts. I'd expect him back to take reps in spring football. Um, this is not a uh, nine-month or 12-month injury by any means. Um, this is more of, unfortunately, just where we are in the season. Um, in terms of uh, where he is mindset-wise, you know, what I, what I loved about him is, you know, we, we said you can't play like you did against Oregon in terms of turning the ball over, but you can play like you did against Oregon in terms of moving the football and using your feet. Um, and that's what he did. He didn't turn the ball over and he used his feet. So he took coaching extremely well. He utilized the bye week to his advantage. Um, clearly he was very comfortable out there, so he was very, very upset. Uh, he transferred here to play, and he came here to really help us. And uh, I believe as, as he was learning the system more and more, uh, we were going to be able to reap some of those benefits. Um, and I, I believe in Gunner. Gunner won the job um, in training camp because of the way he was able to throw the football in training camp. So we have to um, now you know, reverse course go back to that week of BYU preparation and uh, remind him why he won the job and show him some of the good things he did against BYU. Well, Greg and then Troy, if you wrote a book about the quarterbacking issues you faced in your career, would it be a thick book and what would be chapter one? Uh, I, I would say that this might be the most unique one, um, but it would be a pretty thick book because I don't know how many years I've had the same quarterback return. Um, the one, you know, based on either my changing of a job or based on somebody else graduating, there's been so many changes that I've had experienced with um, new starter almost almost every year. Um, and then uh, except for in L.A. when we had golf for two in a row. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that this is a unique one. I would say this is the most unique because of the fact that we really had no separation and then the separation came during the season. And then when the separation finally came, an injury then occurred. So that really made it the most unique. But um, I'm excited to see what these two young guys will, will bring now. And I saw them a little bit. And now they, you know, there is no more um, veteran presence. So it's two young guys battling it. And I think Gunner uh, hopefully will step up. And uh, with that, the rest of our team has to step up. Some things that you could do to get Gunner and rhythm and playing like you did against BYU. Um, yeah, I think uh, you know one of the things that happened against BYU is we went down early and then we kind of got into almost like a two-minute tempo. And when he got into the two-minute tempo, usually those are the plays that you practice the most um, because they're your most standard. They're not your game plan plays as much as they're your training camp plays. Uh, that was where he had a familiarity. Um, and then I also believe we were able to use the perimeter throwing game to his advantage because he has a big arm so he can get the ball out there fast. I mean, uh, that helped us because I think Stanley had a couple big ones and then BJ had a couple uh, just up the sideline. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to look back and see what he did well and then also uh, see if there's some ways we can get him just confident. You know, that it's more about being confident than in a rhythm. And if we can get him confident back there, I think the rhythm will come point of the season, Jeff, then what are the fundamental differences between Gunner and, and, and Will, in your mind, that, that make him now the guy to move forward with? Yeah, uh, I, would, I think the biggest difference is um, when he's in the huddle, when he's at the line of scrimmage, when he's talking the game with his teammates, he's got tremendous command. Uh, he has a really, really good confidence about himself in terms of being able to speak the game. 
And then, uh, you know, I, I trust that when Gunner goes out there that he'll, uh, he'll make the right decision and get to the ball to the right person. But uh, Will is certainly very much, you know, has to be prepared just like Gunner had to be prepared. Um, I think uh, something that those guys learn is that you really do have to be ready. You really are one play away. Uh, sometimes I think when you're a young backup quarterback, you think, well, if I'm not starting, I'm not playing. And you don't realize how quickly uh, you can get thrown into the fire. And, you know, Gunner got put in a 24-16 game against a Pac-12 South opponent. You know, you got to be ready to go. And Will's going to have to do the same. Uh, it was going to be on that respect. Um, what is it about Will? What does he need to do to – and could he still, like, beat him out this week? Or do you want to stick with the guy for now? No, I think we need, we need Gunner to get all the reps. Uh, we, we, we learned um, – as we were going through these competitions that these guys currently are a group of players that need as many reps as possible to be successful, which um, could haunt you if you ever have an injury during the game, obviously. But um, I think what Will needs to do is Will needs to just continue to improve upon uh, his opportunities when he, sh when he has those and be uh, confident, you know, and recognize that he can make the plays and then play within the system. And that's my advice to both those guys. You know, you don't need to make things up. That's what Jordan really accomplished, um, not just in the UCLA game, but really in the last drive against NAU when I think he went six for six. Um, and then, you know, kind of skewed off of it, you know, and then came back and then skewed off of it a few plays. But if we just continue to, you know, just stick with what we're asking him to do, I think those guys can become successful. What have you tried to do so far, and what can you continue to do to try to cut down on the penalties? Yeah, the, the penalties this week were, were a unique group of them. They were kind of different than what we've had in the past. Um, an illegal chop block on a bubble screen. Um, you know, I always thought the rule was if you're head up, you're head up. Um, they called Bryce Woma for being, off, for being on the ball and didn't look like that on the, on the film, you know, which was a third down conversion. The false starts were disappointing, but they they do a lot of they do a lot of pre snap movement and um, they do a lot of things that cause. I think they got called for it actually. Also, for one time they just fell down right in front of the center and the center flinched and that was on the defense. So they kind of do some things that cause you not to hold your water and you need to. And um, I think it was ten on offense, two on defense, and that's just way too many penalties. Uh, and then the holding comes sometimes from holding the ball or scrambling the wrong way. You know, all of a sudden you're holding – Gunner got a holding penalty against them, holding the ball, got to get the ball out. You know, there's a, there's a certain time frame that goes in with an offensive lineman that you just can't expect to hold it for too long. But, you know, 12 penalties was ridiculous for us. Alex, have you ever seen an opposing team hold up um, signs or the screens to prevent any hand signal screens? I think, that, I think the reason that happened was the way the press boxes are set up here – um, you know, traditionally the press boxes are facing, right, fa the, facing the visitor team. For us, it faces the home team. And because of that, the, they had, we had a coach on our staff that was on the UCLA staff. I think there was probably some thought process that we would know their signals and be able to communicate it. But uh, we didn't, and we weren't. But that is why the silver screens were out there. It was so you couldn't see down, I think. Yep. Uh, so, you know, in today's state of college football, Jordan could have easily entered the transfer portal when he wasn't the, the starter or when he was third string on the depth chart. What kind of level of appreciation do you have for a guy like that who just kind of put his head down and continued to work and wait for a shot? Jordan wanted to be here. Uh, Jordan, you know, Jordan reached out to us almost within a month of getting the job. Uh, he knew a lot of what we were doing at Miami when I was with Ja'Cory Harris and Stephen Morris. Uh, his family was kind of aware of what type of offense we ran. He reached out to us, said he wanted to be here, and I think – when he didn't win the job, he still wanted to find a way to, to learn this offense and become the starter. He has two years of football available to him. Um, this isn't going to be his last shot. And uh, I think he really wanted to compete. I think he believed in himself. He has great belief and confidence and felt as if if he continued to learn our system that he was going to end up becoming the starter. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the fluke of an injury prevented that for the rest of this season. Last question, Michael. Uh, 
I have a couple for you. Um, sure. One, J.D. Brown dressed for the game, but he didn't get any snaps. What was the reason for that? Yeah, J.B. made uh, – uh, that was some personal things that were going on with J.B. that we uh, chose not to play him. Okay, and the other thing is, can you walk us through the sequence at the end of the first half? You got an interception. Yeah. Yeah. There were 23 seconds left, and you know, I part of me was saying it's a 14-13 ball game. You know, we got to be wise here. We're right at the midfield mark. We turn the ball over to them. They have two timeouts. They get a chance to kick a field goal. You know, let's see if we can get a completion. We got a completion, nine-yard completion, and then we had a chance on about the 42 to run a four verts and uh, try to take a shot to get closer. Uh, probably didn't expect the play to take 17 seconds to get lined up. We had guys running kind of uh, unnecessarily so all over the place, but um, that's my fault. I should have taken the time out there and get us two plays, see if we can get closer. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And guys, we are filming.